In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the new Exchange Certificate Wizard. If you used Exchange Server 2007, you know that importing and enabling certificates for SSL, uh, for transport services such as SMTP, for web services, uh, ActiveSync, AutoDiscover was a little bit problematic just because it required a lot of PowerShell. Uh, now, you only ran these commands uh, uh, once or, or twice, depending on your number of servers that you have, but it sure would be nice to have a wizard. Well, this is one of the new things that we have in Exchange Server 2010. And so it's, it's what we're going to uh, look at in this demonstration. So let's take a look. We've got the Exchange Management Console opened up. And if you select Server Configuration in the Exchange Management Console, you can see we've got two, uh, two servers listed here. Okay? Uh, the first server, we've got the Exchange Certificate uh, that is listed. And we can, go, uh, we can open that up to see information about that certificate. It was issued to EX1 by EX1. In other words, it is the self-signed certificate. If we go to the details of it, uh, we see that the uh, subject alternative name only has uh, the internal name and then the internal fully qualified domain name. Okay, so this is the self-signed certificate. It is valid for use with Exchange. It is valid and, and set up to use uh, services of IMAP, POP, IIS, and SMTP. Okay. However, we really need to generate a, a new certificate request. And so we'll right-click, and this is where we would have used PowerShell previous uh, to this, and we'll right-click and launch the new Exchange Certificate Wizard. Okay, the Exchange Certificate Wizard, we're going to get the, uh, the friendly name for this certificate. So we'll just call this Exchange 1 Web Cert. And then we'll get the prompted for the choice to enable a wildcard certificate. Wildcard certificates can be used if you want, if you have subdomains. We're not going to use that. Just go ahead and click next. And then notice these are all the different areas that Microsoft Exchange uh, can utilize a certificate for. Well, we're going to start with the Outlook web app. We just focus on whether it's on the intranet and on the internet. So it is on the intranet. We'll put in the, uh, the internal name of that machine. And then it all is also on the internet. And so we'll put in the external name that we would be using, uh, we would be using in order to communicate with that from the internet. We're going to get the same things, notice, just minimize those, same things for ActiveSync. Uh, or similar, I should say. ActiveSync is enabled, the domain name that you use to access ActiveSync. And so in this case, it would be the external domain name again. Minimize that. And basically, we just go down the line here. Web Services, Outlook Anywhere, and Auto Discover. We do have Web Services enabled. We are going to use Outlook Anywhere. Uh, the external host name needs to be set again. Oops. And then whether or not auto discover is in use on the internet. The long URL, short URL, you can use URLs in another format like a, uh, the DNS SRV record method. We're actually just going to use the auto discover long URL. Uh, that's what clients will query for. You know, none of this is actually has actually uh, changed. It's the wit. Whoops! It is the uh, the wizard that has actually changed. Okay, now then we determine whether or not we're using POP and IMAP. We'll just leave that off. If this is a transport server, are we using TLS? Uh, are we using it for POP and IMAP client submission? We'll say no, we're not. Okay, so it's going to go next, and we've got the certificate domains that are listed here. Autodiscover.kalliance.com, EX1, the internal, and webmail. Uh, we can determine which one to set as, as the common name. I'm going to choose webmail since that's the external name that we're going to use. Then we get the information for the, the certificate. Okay? And what you put in here is just dependent on your organization, of course, and your certificate authority. Uh, but it makes it much easier that we do have, a, uh, we, we do have this, this information. Or, um, excuse me, we do have a wizard to type this information in. We're going to produce a cert uh, request uh, file that we will then submit 
uh, that we will then submit to a certificate authority, most likely an external certificate authority. Okay, so we'll go ahead and hit uh, new, and it's running the same command that we used to run, new exchange certificate. It's also using the management shell command to write uh, a file, certrec.txt. Uh, We've got that certificate uh, listed here. Now, if I, if I open up uh, my C drive, actually go to my documents here, there it is. And we're going to open this up just with Notepad, just to take a look, but we know that it's going to be the same thing. Now, at this point, same thing as we would used to have. At this point, I would take and either upload that file, or I would copy and uh, paste that information into an online certificate authority and wait uh, for that certificate to be issued to me. We won't go through that process. I just wanted to show you a first look at that uh, new certificate wizard that will greatly simplify the process of uh, providing or creating certificate requests, and then another import certificate wizard that will walk you through the process of assigning that certificate to your new Exchange 2010 servers.